Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome, welcome again to another video where we are going to be testing the uh, the new uh, Stream Assistant uh, version from Pico. As you can see here, we are rocking the uh, version 9.4.7.1. And uh, at the moment, we are on the preset height for the uh, resolution, pretty much. And now uh, we're getting about 40 son frames per second on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, when using uh, this in combination with the uh, OpenXR toolkit. Um, one of the main things that I wanted to kind of highlight on this test and comparison is pretty much the latency, the game latency, but more importantly, the encoding latency. I think that there is a problem. There's still a major problem with uh, the Pika 4 Stream Assistant as far as the encoding. The encoding latency here, I find it very, very high. And as a result, I am not really sure if this is going to come out on the recording. But when I am moving my head, the picture, like the world, the virtual world, the world is uh, also shaking like crazy. Like if I move my head down, I can see the whole picture, the whole world shaking. And this has to be related to uh, the very high latency that we have for the encoding specifically. Now the overall latency here, which is about 79, 80 milliseconds, doesn't appear to be that bad for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is about what I get usually when uh, when I'm using virtual desktop. Of course, I have a much better picture quality with virtual desktop. Here, uh, unfortunately, with this preset, it still doesn't look right. It's still a little bit blurry, even though I am using the uh, um, the sharpening feature on the Stream Assistant, which is on beta, by the way. Now, let's go ahead and do a quick test. So I am going to I am going to exit out of the uh, uh, VR mode here, and we are going to change uh, the preset here to uh, Ultra, and then we're gonna keep the uh, the rest of the stuff the same pretty much. Just to show you that when you go to Ultra, like the picture quality does improve a lot, but still we have that very high latency specifically on the encoding side of the house right so let me just kind of switch over to the pass through here and i am going to try to show you my settings here uh, let me get a little bit closer let's close this and let's go here so these are the preset that i mean that i'm using right now i am on high which is supposedly for at least an rtx 3070. I have a 3090, so I should be doing well with the uh, with the Ultra. So I am going to switch over to Ultra. Before I do that, though, I'm gonna show you the rest of my settings here. So I do have the image sharpening, which is on beta. That one is enabled. Um, I do not have the space war uh, stuff like to create fake frames. I do have the codec. HVC. I'm going to switch over. Let's go ahead and switch over to uh, HVC. And uh, for the VR refresh rate, I will keep it the same as 72 for now. So let's go ahead and save this. And we're going to go back to USB. All right. So here we are back on uh, Microsoft Fly Sim on the Ultra preset. So. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into the simulator here. And we are going to go to one of the lightest airports that I have as far as performance. Uh, so just to just so we kind of see what type of uh, performance we are going to get from here. Let me just double check. This is what I selected here. All right, let's go in. All 
Okay, so... Right, so... Picture quality looks pretty good. I'm not gonna lie to you. It looks very nice, to be honest. Uh, like, if I compare it to how this thing looked like before with the stream assistant, now it does look pretty good. Now, the, the only problem that I'm seeing here is the encode latency. It looks like GPU render percentage is like 90 some percent, 100% right there. And the encode is pretty high. So I'm going to have to figure out what's going on there with that part. Uh, but let me quickly show you. Hopefully, we're not going to run into any problems here. But I'm going to show you how this looks now uh, using uh, virtual desktop, right? All right, so we back here on virtual desktop. And for whatever reason, my Pico mic stopped working. Anyway, these are my settings. Uh, I am on Ultra. I am going to try to bring up the uh, uh, bit rate to 150 to match what I had on Stream Assistant. And uh, let's go ahead and disable uh, video buffering. So I'm going to disable this one because I didn't have this enabled in uh, Stream Assistant. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the resolution that Virtual Desktop is sending to uh, Pico. I mean to uh, Steam VR. As you can see here, the resolution is a bit higher than what the Ultra settings sense in Stream Assistant. All right, so here we are back on Microsoft Flight Simulator. I have no idea what's going on with Virtual Desktop and the Pico built-in recorder. As you can see here, I have some weird black bars on the left side here. Anyway, uh, take a look here at the encoding latency. If you remember, we were getting about 30 milliseconds of encoding latency in Stream Assistant. Here is about 9 milliseconds, which is incredibly uh, lower. Probably, I'll say uh, the Stream Assistant is uh, three times actually higher for whatever reason. And the whole experience in Virtual Desktop, man, it's just so silky smooth. Everything here is just right pretty much even the colors the picture quality looks amazing pretty much and i am no longer getting those uh shaking stuff going on i think it's a problem with tracking in uh stream assistant maybe caused by the encoding latency uh but overall man this looks pretty good right so something i forgot to do was to show you my uh OpenXR uh, toolkit settings, which I am going to show you now. So just uh, take a screenshot. I am not going to go over all of this stuff here. All right, so that's pretty much it for my OpenXR toolkit settings. And unfortunately, Stream Assistant is not ready for prime time. So I guess I'll stick with the uh, virtual desktop for now. The only problem is that in virtual desktop, you're not able to just use your USB connection uh, connected to your computer unless you do USB tethering. And as you guys know, that causes a lot of you know crashes uh, blue screen on Windows. Um, so what I've been doing is pretty much just using a USB to Ethernet connection. Right, so that's pretty much for this video. I hope you found this informative. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I will see you on the next one. Take care.